Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As we know, nuclear reactors get their energy from nuclear fission. The fission releases a very large amount of energy. If not controlled, this energy can cause disasters such as the Chernobyl disaster and the Three Mile Island accident. In this video, we will discuss the working of nuclear reactors. One of the main advantages of nuclear reactors is that instead of burning any fuel, it derives the power from nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is a type of nuclear reaction in which the nucleus of heavy elements like uranium or plutonium is split into two parts of roughly equal mass. This splitting is accompanied by the release of some byproduct particles and a very large amount of energy. To ensure safety and utilize the power at the same time, nuclear reactors are designed to control nuclear fission and sustain the chain reaction. The reactor generates heat in many ways, like the kinetic energy of the fission products is converted to thermal energy on the collision of the products with the nearby atoms. The byproduct particles like gamma rays released in fission are absorbed by the reactor and converted to heat energy. Then finally, the splitting of the atoms, also called radioactive decay, produces heat as well. The heat generated in the reactor needs to be extracted from the reactor core in order to use it for the generation of electricity. This is accomplished by the use of a coolant. Depending on the type of the reactor, the coolant can be normal water, heavy water or some liquid metal like molten salt. The coolant is then used to carry away the heat to generate steam. The water used for the generation of steam can be physically separated from the reactor core as in the case of a pressurized water reactor. The water for the steam turbine can also be directly boiled by the reactor core as in the case of a boiling water reactor. We will see the types of reactors in detail in upcoming videos. Due to the large amount of energy released during fission, there comes a need to control and sustain the reaction taking place in the reactor. This is achieved by reaction control. Let's see how that is done. A neutron is used for fissioning because it has no charge, thus it can get close enough to the nucleus of an atom without being deflected by the positive charge of the protons or the negative charge of the electrons. But a neutron moving very fast cannot be effectively used for the fission reaction. For this reason, a moderator is used in a nuclear reactor. A moderator slows down the fast moving neutrons so that they can be used to propagate a nuclear chain reaction. Water is used as a moderator in most of the nuclear reactors, although solid graphite or heavy water can also be used as moderators. After the moderator, let's see the controlling of nuclear reaction. The rate of the fission reaction happening in the reactor core can be controlled by controlling the number of neutrons that induce further fission. Control rods are helpful in capturing the neutrons which would otherwise cause fission. In order to slow down the fission rate, the control rods are inserted into the reactor core so that they absorb the neutrons. On the other hand, when the control rods are extracted, the fission rate increases, thus increasing the power output. Materials that can absorb neutrons effectively are preferred in making control rods. These materials can be elements like cadmium, silver, indium, boron, hafnium, or alloys like high boron steel, boron carbide, etc. We have seen the controlling of reactions. Now, let's discuss the core of the nuclear reactors. The core is where the fission reaction takes place. The fuel is usually uranium assembled by means of fuel pellets. The core has a shielding in order to stop the radiation from leaking. Thus, the reaction is controlled and a proportional amount of power is produced in the nuclear reactor. Now, we have seen the basic components of a nuclear reactor and how the reactions are controlled to operate the power plant for generation of electricity. Depending on their mechanisms, nuclear reactors can be of various types. We'll be discussing the types of nuclear reactors in detail in upcoming videos. So stay tuned and until then, goodbye.